Well, I guess I should start by apologizing. I haven't done a video in like what feels like forever. I guess it's only been about a week, but that's kind of forever. And I've been in this garage every damn day. As soon as the real job is done, I'm out here working for several hours and then on the weekends and I'm not whining, I'm not whining. I'm just saying things have been challenging. So let's get into a whole, how do we get here? So if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm not sure why you clicked on if you're new, but God love you. Anyway, if you're an old viewer, God love you even more. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am building a chopper right now. A custom ground up bike, aftermarket frame, wheels, tires, motor, everything. This, this bike has 0.1% Harley Davidson in it, and it's actually just like maybe a couple fasteners and probably the outer primary cover. It's gonna be like the only thing actual Harley on this bike. Everything else is aftermarket. I am building it for uh, the Smokeout. The Smokeout is a legendary gathering chopper party that uh, it's one of the places that Indian Larry and Billy Lane and you know Dave Perowitz and all of them became mainstream famous. I hope that didn't offend anybody. What I mean by mainstream famous is the Discovery Channel days, right? I can't remember if it was the first episode or second episode or how that worked, but Smoke Out was one of the places that bikes were ridden to and then judged by the crowd on Discovery Channel shows and all that stuff. So Smoke Out was sort of, um, I don't want to say reborn, but rebooted again in 2022 by Chris and Heather Callen, who owns Cycle Source Magazine. Now, not to offend anybody, it's not like just Chris and Heather. There's a whole freaking family of people that helped that, that crew to make this happen. Tons of people, think, oh, all the hamsters, Chris is a hamster. All the hamsters helped do that. Um, all of the cycle source crew, Mark and the rest of them come together and, and make this happen. And it is a tremendous effort and it's a lot of fun. I mean, I took my fairly cherry 1980 FLT shovel head to smoke out last year in 2023. And I, uh, I did this. I mean, it was fine, but didn't it kind of sound like a John Deere tractor doing it? <laughs> like it wasn't, wasn't whining on and on and on. So like, Bruh. and then, you know, but it did it. You know, what do you want? And then in 2022, our first year, there was a huge rainstorm and somehow it wasn't rained out. The rain made it better. It was a freaking blast. And we were in the bottom, the other side of the tracks, down with the steerage where you would expect. And we were next to a whole big crew, Randy uh, and Josh and all those dudes that are, that are, that are uh, some of them active duty young Marines. And we brought this electric scooter, which I did a video on the new one that I'm leaning on right now. And we brought this electric scooter and they did this with it. There you go. That's brilliant. If you just want to relocate, you just do that. <laughs> I thought you were gonna ride that. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. It's, it's, I don't think that's what that company intended by that. Like when they sent me that thing. So our tax dollars like pay their salary. I love it. I, lo I love that. That's that's what you expect a marine to be like, right? My dad was a marine in the '60s, and uh, I would have loved to have had video of him doing stuff like that back then. Well, they didn't have electric scooter. You know what I'm talking about. So anyway, for smoke out. Uh, in 2024, there is going to be an amateur build off, a garage build, if you will. It's not amateur because it's a lot of these dudes are not amateurs. They're they're but they still build at home. They don't do it as the, for a living. That's the whole point. And they went out to I think 50 some odd people um, applied, and then I think they they chose 24 entries, and then social media chose 12 of those 24 on votes, and now there's a final 12 that are actually going to show up in Salisbury in 2024 in September. I'll put the dates on the screen so I can remember what they are. Uh, with a bike. And then those 12, the crowd at the Smokeout will vote for six of those, I, I hope I'm saying this right, will vote for six of those 12 and those final six are then gonna go into uh, judging by the pros, by Chris and, and, and I don't know who else. Dave, Dave Perowitz types, I mean like, you know, Roadside Marty, blah, blah, I don't know who all is gonna vote, but those six will then be judged by, by uh, the actual pros, and, and then there will be a winner. 
you know, a crowned winner. I don't know if it's places. I think it's just a crowned winner. And then whoever wins uh, gets a spot at Mama Tried. Okay, that's freaking awesome, man. Mama Tried. I'd love to go to Mama Tried someday, but I can only go to so many things in a year. And right now we do, in theory, both Daytonas. So March and October. We do Sturgis in August. That's our big one. We will not miss that. And we do Leesburg uh, in April. So just a few weeks away. Uh, fantastic Florida long weekend rally. And then Smokeout in September. And I just can't, you know, I'd have to give something up to do, you know, Born Free or Mama Tried. I'd love to do it, but I just can't. Anyway, so uh, so the winner will be in Mama Tried also. This bike is not going to win. I'm okay with it. Don't say, well, you never know. No, I do know. I've seen some of the bikes that are being worked on. <laughs> I'm not going to win. But it, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to build this bike for me. I wanted to build it in a way that not, wouldn't necessarily, uh, how do I say this? The way that I'm going to build it for me is the kind of way that will not win a show, and that's okay, right? So, for example, after many, many hours of thought and gyration and whatnot, I have decided to definitely not go jockey shift. I'm not doing a foot clutch because I want to ride the hell out of this bike. And yes, I know you can ride the hell out of the jockey ship. I just don't want to do it. I, I ride in South Florida traffic. I want to put my daughter on the back. I want to be able to take her for rides on it. So what I want to build is an, a bike that can be ridden every day, even though it's a rigid. So I am doing hand clutch, right? Uh, I'm not running a front brake, so I'm doing at least that much. I'm not running a front fender. I am running an old school Paco Springer. I'm doing a lot of cool stuff, but a lot of stuff like the foot clutch, that's just not a show winning kind of thing typically. Um, I'm using a Paco frame with a stock rake. Here, I'll just show you right. Jesus, what am I doing? So I started by ordering a kit from Paco. I shouldn't call it a kit. A roller, um, I guess, kit. You call it the Dirty Biker, okay? And the Dirty Biker includes some wheels and tires and frame and a rear fender and oil, oil bag. Uh, not that one. <laughs> the frame is not the same. Uh, and a nice six over Springer. Um, I then had Paco heavily modify it. So I'm gonna run a 90s era soft tail five speed. My motor, it, it, there's a whole videos on that. My motor is uh, a mystery SNS stroker. So if those jugs are stock size, we all love jugs. If they're all stock, if it's stock size, then it's a 98 inch. Um, if they're bored out, who knows? But I'm not, the bike ran, I got the motor to run in the old donor bike. So I'm not gonna tear into the motor, it runs fine. Um, so it's got a super G carb on it. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty hot motor, even if it is just 98 inches, but I wanted to run that in a tiny little Frisco bike. So, uh, it should be pretty badass. So my frames are modified from the dirty biker, but it's a starting point. The dirty biker is intended for pans, shovels, or evos with a four speed. And I have a five speed, so you have to change the, you know, uh, you have to kind of cave that spine in a little bit and some other stuff. So what I have so far done is I've done some cleaning on the frame. There was some, you know, kind of boogery welds. Not, not bad. You would normally cover that up, so who cares? But clean this up a little bit, flat topped it a little bit, smoothed it out. Uh, I did a lot of little cleaning on welds here and there, like you would, and then dropped the motor in. So again, it's an Evo, so it's sitting right in the cradle, just fine and dandy. Uh, it's a polished Evo though, so it ought to be pretty when it's done. Uh, I've got some custom bits you see there. A memorial to Natalie, the lady who owned the bike. I pulled that motor out of. I wanted to call her out in the, in this build because. Again, that purple bike, which I'll put a picture somewhere here on the screen, was hers she had custom built in the 90s. Now, that's pretty badass for, you know, women riders, we all support them today, but in the 90s it was even crazier that she did that. So that's pretty amazing. So I wanted to honor her with at least something on there so that the, the ignition cover says on loan from Natalie. Um, transmission is still going to be redone. That's the way it came out of the purple bike, looking that bad. <laughs> So I've got new top cover, new side cover, and I'll just polish the hell out of the case. It'll look great when I'm done with it, but I just haven't bothered with it yet. Because I will have time when everything's out to paint and powder and all that. Rear fender is a standard tractor fender, or trailer fender. You could buy that at Tractor Supply. So it comes with a kit, it's not drilled, none of that stuff. Something about those who may discredit this and other bikes for starting with a roller, a roller is not a roller. I think people who have, A, they've never built a bike, if they talk smack like this, they've never done it, but They'll say like, oh, you start with a roller, it's cheating. Well, I think what they're thinking is like a truck pulls up and they open the back door and they like roll out an assembled frame and tins and wheels, and tires and forks. And, and then you just like drop the motor in it, the transmission in it, wire it and fire it. Now, you can do that. There are like CMC kits that, that I've seen them at shows that are already painted. I imagine you can buy them even painted. So then you are just dropping a drivetrain and wiring it and good to go. 
that's not what most rollers is. It's certainly not what this one is. I'm not knocking it, it's just what it is. So what I my fender had no holes. There was no uh, uh, a way to attach it to the bike. There were no spacers, no brackets, no that stuff. So you had a fender and you had a frame, and you had to figure out how you're going to fab up the way you're going to mount it to the frame. And I did that. Just finish it today. You have a sissy bar that has a mounting hole, so you have that, uh, and you have the holes on the frame for the sissy bar. So you have some help with geometry, right? But you don't have a way to attach the fender to the frame, for example. Uh, you still have to massage the frame before paint, as far as like what I did with the, the welds. There's still some little tweaks here and there you may have to do. Like, for example, the transmission, it came with the plate. The plate bolts to the frame, and then the transmission bolts to the plate, okay? Well, my drain hole doesn't quite match up with the track on the plate, or I'm sorry, on the frame. So, one of the things I'm going to have to do before I send this off is I'm going to have to clean that channel out a little bit, line it up, and get it to where I can get that in there. So, there's always some little, you know, bits here and there. Um, mounting the oil bag. I changed the typical design and went with a horseshoe shaped soft tail style oil bag with a center fill just because I wanted. I don't want you to be able to see the neck or anything. And there's no fasteners. I talked about that in an earlier video. You need rubber isolator fasteners, specialty fasteners to, to mount that to the frame. Had to find those and order them. It's basically I had to buy uh, the rubber isolator mounts for like a mid 90s fat boy. That's what I needed. And then that's mounted up. Um, I have the bearings and cups and all that, so I'm ready to put the Springer on. It is a really nice Springer front end. Paco makes probably one of the best in the business. Uh, again, this is a six over, so it's not crazy long, but it's going to make for... A, it's the exact stance I wanted. Very Frisco style, handle really well. My buddy Bill tells me I'm not allowed to roll in that triangle headlight because he hates it. So we'll figure something else out because I don't want to offend Bill. But <laughs> so we got the wheel mounted up. Another thing, this came with the spacers, axle, wheel and tire, all that. I went to my buddy Bryn, Quality Handmade Cycles. Check him out on Instagram if you're an Instagram person. Quality Handmade Cycles, follow that dude. Really, really good guy. Um, I took the wheels and tires to Bryn. He has a tire machine, he mounted them up for me. Uh, and while I'm there, I should have brought the axle with me and didn't. Got home, the axle would not go through the fork or the wheel. It was about, you know, a thousandth too thick. Had to go back to Bryn, put the axle on the lathe and some sandpaper and stuff and take not not even a thousandth, maybe just just a hair. Uh, brought the wheel with me, and then we'd put it on the lathe for a little bit, sand it for a second, test it. Put it on the lathe for a minute, sand it, test it. Like, and then finally she slipped through. You don't want it to fall through, but you don't want it. You don't want to have to hammer it through. You know. So thanks, thank God, Bryn has a lot of stuff and is willing to help me with things like that. That I this I'm truly a garage builder. I don't have a lathe. You know. So uh, help me with that. Uh, we're about ready to throw the front end on because now I've got my spacers made. I'll show you everything that I've had to make. So I had to find a conversion kit because this again was a belt drive soft tail, the motor and trans was in. So I had to find a conversion kit for that you know, 90s soft tail and it came with all the spacers and stuff I need. So ditched the belt drive front pulley, put on the rear with a new spacer that it came with in that kit to push that out a little bit. Put the spacer on the wheel with a sprocket here and then mounted up the wheel, kind of straightened it up, and noticed, you probably can't see in the video, rear sprocket is out too much. Why? Because that spacer, I don't need it. <laughs> so I put the spacer on, turn out I don't need the damn thing. So when I take that spacer off, it's gonna drop that sprocket back in just right and line that up. So we gotta do that. Uh, I bought a, an axle spacer kit because I find it's easier to start with, you know, a box of these little bastards and see if you can have one that's really close to the right size, so you're not constantly cutting and squaring. But this side, I found one in the box was the perfect size. This side, no way. Because the spacer on this side goes through the slot in the frame, that's how you adjust the axle, but it comes with a very long one. So I had to lob that off, and you can see that little sliver of chrome between the brake holder and the frame, that's the spacer I made. It had to lob off and square up and file down to make this final spacer assembly. And then had to change the spacer in the actual brake hanger, and then had to make one just the right size for that. So there's a lot of like making shit <laughs> to make the back wheel go on. Before you say anything in the, co in the comments, excuse me, it is not straight right now. I know that, it can't be. You can see the wheels cocked that way a little bit. Because without a chain putting tension on the wheel, I can't use this adjuster to straighten the axle, you know what I'm saying? So the wheel's gonna sit cockeyed in the frame until it's truly put together. So can't do that yet. Um, had to make spacers to mount the, the rear fender. I figured out my own way to 
mount up the rear fender. So these tabs here are actually for the oil tank, okay? So what I did was find, again, no hardware was included, find the right hardware I wanted at the right length, and then I actually took uh, one, a one inch spacer and cut it in half because I needed a half inch here. So I made these two spacers here to float the fender back off the frame and then took a one inch spacer down there to give me the radius I needed to get the fender where I want it. Uh, and then that lines up really nicely actually with the sissy bar, this, this mount here, this saddle that the fender sits on. So that's all where I, it's not gonna look right, not right now again because the wheel's not sitting in the frame right because of all what I just described. So that's a thing. Um, and then what else? I have to drill some more holes for wiring. So I got one here and one here. So I got basically the, the out for the ignition and then one will come back in and go here and then come up here and exit on the other side you can't see for the headlight. Uh, so that's done. I have to drill one more and kind of make a plan, I think here. That's where I need to drill because I'm gonna have my breaker here. Okay, breaker's gonna mount here. Uh, and then it'll sort of path that way. My goal is to hide as much wiring as possible. I'm even thinking about trying to hide the uh, ignition wires inside the spine if I can do that. On brown sugar, my last chopper, I just ran out of time and ability and I ended up having to zip tie a small bundle that ran on the bottom and you can't really see it. It just bothers me because I know it's there and I really don't want to do that this time. So uh, I'm going to work on that quite a bit to make sure that wires are not seen. From there, the plan is the frame, the frame is going to go to powder coat. I'm trying to think of anything else. Well, the frame is going to go to powder coat. And I guess not to be a reveal kind of person, but I haven't fully decided, but I'm thinking sort of a metal flake black or something like that to powder coat the frame. So the frame's really tough. Uh, and then the gas tank, which is a Frisco style two gallon and rear fender are gonna go to Chopper Carl who painted uh, brown sugar and he's gonna do something wild on the fender and tank. Uh, and then we got a lot of little cool stuff. So I did brass accents. So on my Super G car, I went all in. So we did, we have a single cable throttle. So I changed all the, the you know, the, the hardware out for that. This is actually the enrichment knob here, which is now a middle finger. And we got a, a brass bell, a velocity stack for an intake. Uh, yes, we do have a brass Pro Monkey Derby cover there. We have a brass Pingle uh, Petcock on the tank. So excited about that. I've been doing some studying on how to stop the gas tank from damaging the paint. It looks like something about the top lip of the neck you don't paint and you put JB weld around it like a smearing of it and then sand it and supposedly that creates a nice barrier uh, not the top the outsides and supposedly that'll that'll keep the the fumes from eating your paint because it gets under the paint is only what happens so you don't want to paint the actual outside of the neck you know so that's what I'm gonna try and do and save the paint because we all know what you know that sort of bat uh, baton style gas cap what that can do to the paint so we have to protect that and then we got a whole lot of cool stuff in a box over there. So I have one of those really cool Italian made brass clutch levers. Uh, I've got uh, a prism supply, the chain throttle, chain driven throttle inside there. I've got all kinds of really cool stuff to go on, but I figured I owed y'all, you know, an update of where I am and what's going on. Um, I keep melting down <laughs> and going, that's it, I quit. And then I put a, <coughs> a whiny post on Instagram or something like that. And then oddly enough, uh, Chris Callen always calls me and goes, no man, let's talk this through. <laughs> like, it's good to have friends. And then of course, Bill Stevens that you all know who built uh, the time machine and the green bike that you all have seen. I'll put pictures of his stuff in here. He's a really good pal. And we talk to each other almost daily. And he's like, well, you need to do this. And well, you need to do that. Have you thought about this? And he you know, tries to get in front of problems where I run into him. So, because again, I've done this once before. And I did a whole other video on starting with a, a roller or starting with a donor bike. My last one, while I changed 80% of the bike, it still was sort of a donor, right? The, the, the last bike I built, that motor had sat in that frame. That's about it, because we changed every other part of the bike, but that motor had sat in that frame. And that just, and that, what, did we reuse the fender? No, we got a new fender. But there was just, there had been a plan, if you know what I'm saying, that's what I said before. When you start with a donor bike, there had been a plan at some point 
for how this was all going to go together. And that's kind of where I was starting from. This, I purchased every part. And even though theoretically they're meant to go together, that doesn't mean they're going to. Like you're going to have to really do a whole lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, Bill was saying last night, he makes everything. We, we jokingly say he makes the tires, you know, and he refines the oil himself. When you, when you make every part, you're making every part to fit the other part. And so it's less frustrating than when you buy a part and then it doesn't fit against what it's supposed to fit. So there's a different kind of frustration with that. But that's where I am. You know, I, I really want to hear comments and thoughts and all that sort of stuff. Now, I don't need instructions. I, <laughs> that's what happens. All the comments are like, what right, you should do is this is from somebody who's never built a bike or did in 1962. And I, you know, I, I appreciate that. But, you know, I, I do... Uh, I'm a jerk. Never mind. Just comment whatever comment you want to make, and we'll handle it accordingly. <laughs> From there, I hope I'll see you at Leesburg. That's going to be a blast. Windy Acres is where we stay. Uh, I had a friend ask, should I tent? And I'm like, not at Windy Acres. That's <laughs> not. If you have an RV, yeah. But, and you should visit Windy Acres, but I wouldn't go to Windy Acres unless you have an RV because they call it Windy Acres for a reason. That and there's no trees. So while it's the best place to have a good time in Leesburg, it is a just just a greenhouse, you know. Like it, it's you're going to catch fire. Typically, um, Leesburg, Florida, in April is hot. It's the end of April, so hope we see you at Leesburg. If not, I hope we see you at Sturgis. You know, we're staying at Steel Pony. We'll do meetups and all that sort of stuff. And we're there. We'll figure all that out when we get closer. And then uh, come to Smokeout, man. You can tent at Smokeout. There's some shade and places to hide. Uh, come to Smokeout. It's a lot of fun. And from there, then I guess it's Biketoberfest, and yet another year will be in the books, but. I really do appreciate every one of the channel members especially. I appreciate everybody who watches the channel, so I don't want, to, want you to feel like I'm sliding people. But at this point, I've blown the budget. I mean, like, bl blown it out of the water. Like, I, I say, like, oh, I'm going to try and build it for less than 10. And some of you laughed at me. And you were right to laugh at me because I have blown 10 grand. That's I passed that line a while back. So all the channel members that are members of this channel and pay 20 bucks a month, eight bucks a month, whatever membership level they are, so they can do the private member lives and all that stuff, which we need to schedule one of those for next weekend. Um, you're pretty much funding this now. So all you out there that are members of this channel, you've you've made, I don't, I might not be able to finish it without y'all. So I really, really do love y'all to death, especially the channel members. If you want to help, there's a link in the description. You can go join the channel and then cancel it after smoke out if you want. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just if you want to for a little bit, fine. Uh, not one to beg. I hate that I had to say that. But anyway, I love you all to death. Take care of each other. We'll talk real soon. Bye.